Richard Kelly's Southland Tales is a film about the apocalypse. This idea is conveyed through biblical allusions, foreboding dialogue, this is the fate of world ends. and visions of destruction. However, the apocalypse of Southland Tales isn't the kind you see in other science fiction movies. Here, the apocalypse is something a bit more contemporary, one encompassing the collapse of civil liberties from living in a police state. Fire at will. Or our collective grasp on reality as it's oversaturated by media and information, leading to the catastrophic intersection of celebrity, corporate interests, and politics. Southland Tales depicts a late capitalist dystopia that's none other than our own. Scientists are saying the future is going to be far more futuristic than they originally predicted. Hmm. Sadly, I think every day in the year 2016, everyone has um, felt a lot of apocalyptic doom and gloom in the air. And um, if cinema can help us process that pain or that grief or that anxiety, then that's a healthy thing, I think. Southland Tales depicts an alternate history where the United States of America is beset by two nuclear attacks. This leads the government into a third world war, with the U.S. government reinstituting the draft and extending the Patriot Act, a bill that, in the real nonfiction world of the United States, extended government surveillance to allegedly deter terrorist attacks. This new law that I signed today will allow surveillance of all communications used by terrorists, including emails, the internet, and cell phones. In the fictional world of Southland Tales, the Patriot Act leads to the creation of U.S. INET, which is essentially the Patriot Act blown into a police state on steroids. Civil liberties are seriously compromised as police forces execute perceived threats to national security just on a whim. Fascist pigs! <laughs> which, of course, isn't terribly fictional from what happens in real world America. One of Richard Kelly's greatest influences is Terry Gilliam's Brazil, which famously takes place somewhere in the 20th century, a title that is a cheeky commentary on how the film is simply a hyperbolized version of the world we already live in, one ruled by a heavily bureaucratized government maintained by brainwashing and oppressing its citizens. Though there is story motivation that the film exists in this alternate timeline, Kelly illustrates the often obscene lengths the American government will go to protect corporate and private interests and maintain power, even if it means ruthlessly gunning down supposed neo-Marxists. If this gets out, the election is over. It's an election year, Bob. Everyone pays. They're right, Bob, we should pay. Deep Throat 2 can be silent. As all of this is going on, the actual plot of Southland Tales details that of an action star with amnesia, an ex-porn star, a cop and his doppelganger, and a vast national conspiracy involving neo-Marxists, as mentioned before. There's also a bit on alternate energy and quantum entanglement. The tidal generator within Utopia 3 has achieved simulated perpetual motion. The impact of this achievement has slowed the acceleration of the planet to such a degree that certain environmental anomalies have started to surface. If this sounds confusing, it's because it is. Richard Kelly is notorious for writing narratives that are over-convoluted with exposition-heavy dialogue. In his first film, Donnie Darko, where in the director's cut, Exposition is even presented on screen intermittently throughout the film in a manner that gives no clarity whatsoever and often even complicates the narrative. 
However, the effect of the messy narrative and overexposition is reflexive, where the convolution itself reflects the ongoing detachment the central characters have from perceiving a crumbling reality hypersaturated in information and media. Richard Kelly illustrates this by conflicting and jarring expositional tangents, but also through deliberately casting actors often associated with American pop culture. Justin Timberlake, Sean William Scott, Dwayne The Rock Johnson, Mandy Moore, Sarah Michelle Gellar, to demonstrate the clear intersection of reality and celebrity that prevails in this world. Well, there was a specific uh, design principle in casting the film where I wanted people from different facets of pop culture. It was almost like an Andy Warhol uh, philosophy, I guess. I don't know why I bring him up because it's not specific to the films that he made, but the idea of celebrity being a, uh, a part of the, the experience. And, and a lot of these people were playing uh, these weird reflections of their celebrity image in, in the roles that you see them play. It's hard to overstate the relevance here as American culture obsesses over the fame lottery of social media as identity merges with celebrity, hurtling the culture towards another more unreal realm. I said, do you bleed? Yeah, yeah, dog. Well, then you take the blood train. You talk to God, but not even, not even seeing him. A final note on Southland's tales, prescience comes in its depiction of how real-world trauma can morph in a world drenched in information and screens. Justin Timberlake's character, a war veteran, experiences a drug-induced PTSD flashback that manifests as a kind of MTV music video advertisement where he lip syncs a killer song with dancing nurses as he's coated in blood. I got soul, but I'm not a soldier. I got soul, but I'm not a soldier. I got soul, but I'm not a soldier. Here, Kelly makes his ultimate statement on how the end of the world will take shape, where war, politics, celebrity, and corporate interests escape our control, completely shaping our destination. Southland Tales was incredibly prescient in its vision of America back in 2007, but it's also incredibly prescient now. As social media spreads disinformation like wildfire and identity becomes more tied to celebrity, people get dissociated from what's really going on. COVID and climate change conspiracies run rampant. People tie their self-worth to social capital, and major corporations control the U.S. government and the direction of the economy, even if it might lead to global and environmental catastrophe. The nightmare Southland Tales depicts is uncannily our own as we hurtle to our own apocalyptic destruction. Thank you for watching the video. I just wanted to say that there is a podcast that I am currently a part of called Jump Crouch. I've been on the podcast for about six months and it's basically a espresso style giant bomb video game podcast where we talk about the current games if you like video games you should listen to this video game podcast that's a lot of fun come over and take a listen and hang out with us as we talk about games thank you very much and i hope you enjoyed the video